Okay, I'll be showing question 15 and question 24. So question 15 and question 24 are basically the same type of question. So like I say, you don't need a lot of examples to understand it. So look at the overall technique. Okay, so when you see this kind of ratio question, so first of all, they give you a fraction equal to a fraction. So the first technique that you are being tested will be your cross multiplication. So in this cross multiplication technique, your job is to make sure you got no callous. Your job is to make sure you got no callous. And after this, your job is to shift all the x to one side, all the y to one side. So it doesn't matter uh, which one is on the left, which one is on the right. If you would like to standardize, right, I will usually standardize the x to be on one, the left side, the y to be on the right side. So usually, right, I will put the x on the left and then I'll put the y on the right. It's okay if you want to switch it the other way. It's just that if you standardize things, right, you, you can make things easier for yourself. So from here, you will simplify. So in the case, if you simplify and then you've got both sides to be negative, you can remove the negative because you can divide by minus one on both sides. So until here, you will have gotten your method mark. So until here, you will have gotten your method mark. So from here, right, your job is to answer the question. You got to find the value. You got to find the value of this. So you're going to find the value without knowing what is x and y. So you do not know x, you do not know y, but eventually you can. So I will be showing you two approach. So method one, right, will be something like this. So the first method, you need to isolate to get one x. So if you want to get one x, you divide by 51 on both sides. Okay, then after that, I need 13y. So I need 13y here. So I'm going to divide by 13y. Okay, so I think I need the space. So I'm going to divide by 13y, which will become 1 over 13 1. So that will help you to cancel and you can punch calculator. So which means, right, eventually this is equal to this. So basically, you need to multi uh, divide things on both sides. So that will be one method. Another method will be, right, you look at it in this way. You look at it as 1 over 13 times x over y. Okay, so I'm going to draw the line here. So the other method will be you look at it as this. So if you look at it as this, from this part, right, you focus on getting x over y. You focus on getting x over y. So I'm still going to divide by 51.
then I'm going to divide by y. So you reciprocal this one. So you are dividing by this, so you reciprocal. So you will get to cancel. I feel like I make a careless mistake. Oh, okay. I think I make a careless on this part. Okay, I make a careless on this part because this part can cancel. So x over y is, so this whole fraction is equal to this. So therefore, if it's going to be this, you'll be 1 over 13 times this fraction. So you'll still get the same answer. So you see which approach you like. Actually, I think, uh, if you are not very good with this, you fix an approach. Okay, so personally, I think the second approach is more flexible. So for question 24, it's the same idea. So for question 24, it's exactly the same idea. Cross multiply, no callus in your cross multiplication. and bring all the x to one side, all the y to the other side. If you encounter both negative, well, you divide negative on both sides. So this is where you got your method mark. After that, you, got to, you can try. So in this question, it's just an x over y, so that's quite easy. So what do you do? you get rid of the four because you need a clean X. So you divide by four on both sides. And then you need a Y to be at the bottom. So you divide by Y on both sides. So as you divide by Y, it became a 1 over y. And that's where your y can be cancelled. And eventually, you're left with this. So when you get a ratio like this, right, it's very flexible already. They can ask you to find, for example, 15x over 17y. So that is just 15 over 17 times x over y. So it will just be 15 over 17 times this ratio. So if you can find x over y, essentially you can find any ratio. So like I said, this is a very fixed method. So after these two examples, you should get the idea. You are going to see this in set 4. So after these two questions, please try to get the idea. Again, like I say, right? It's a very repetitive fixed method. You don't need 100 examples to know this. There are too many concepts already. There are harder concepts. This is not a very difficult one. So for a concept that's not very difficult, you don't need so many examples. So you got to ensure that you really understand the technique. 